Hello everyone, welcome back to the course. In the previous video, we have talked about what are the promises and how we can use, how we can work with the promises. In this video, we'll talk about what is async and await keyword inside JavaScript. So asyncs are the functions as I have already told you into the previous video. Async are the functions or we say that these are the special syntax to work with the promises. So if you have seen or if you have remembered into the previous video when we talked about chaining the promises, there were multiple issues like we were calling the promise inside uh, another promise and then if there is another promise then we have to call from that then again it is going to uh, kind of create a callback help problem that we have discussed. So to resolve that there is a new way we say that async await which is going to be very easy for us. It, it is very easy to understand and it is very easy to use and easy to read. So as we say that as a developer it is kind of a very easy thing to learn and very easy thing to implement. You will be seeing this into the LWC course as well and uh, you can also implement if you want into the LWC as per your business requirement and I'm sure you might be using into the various places. Now let's quickly talk about how your async function is going to look like. This is going to look like this. This is the simple function which we say that async, the name of our, sorry, function, the name of our function and it is returning one. And what we need to do is just add one keyword which is async and it is going to make our function to run in async mode. And one thing that you need to keep in mind is async always going to return a promise. It is not going to return a value which is one. That is why if we say that this particular the above function that we have just discussed is equivalent to this function where we are saying promise dot resolve one. So every async function is going to resolve, it's going to return to the resolve function. If you wanted to have some error handling, you might need to use try catch or you might need to use the catch function that we have talked about for your promise. So if we see here, yeah, let's first talk about this async create some uh, demos over there try to learn with this and then we'll come back to the await keyword which is only works inside async function so as we talked about this is the simple example that we have right if we hit enter and if you try to say that function f what you will uh, basically see over here is you say it is a promise which is say that it is in fulfilled state and the value of that fulfilled state is one similarly if we say that it is going to have a function f and this function f is going to return a promise dot resolve that is what we have discussed right so we'll say that promise dot resolve dot reject say that resolve and say that one that is going to be the same thing whatever we have discussed so basically the both the methods are same but the uh, the way of writing these two methods is completely different okay we have got in both the cases we are getting the promise dot resolve now if we wanted to have the value how we can have those value okay so for that what you can do is you can use await keyword await keyword is going to wait for your async function to execute and then it will return whatever your async function is returning so let's say that we have got await and say that f okay we got here now it is saying that one this is going to be your result the end result is going to be like this you are able to use this await here into the browser console but most of the time you will always use await inside an async function whenever you are using await inside lwc you will always be using await inside any async function you can you cannot use as a load statement okay so that was about uh, async function how you write that async function now let's talk about await keyword basically this is also await keyword always being used Besides, we say that async function or any function which is returning a promise. Okay, so what we have here is we have a code. You can say it is async function. We say that we have got f. Okay, then we are trying to use await over here. There is a promise which we have prepared, which is ret uh, returning done after 1000 millisecond. Then we say that await. So it is going to wait until this 1000 millisecond, and then it is going to alert result. So whatever the number you have provided here, this particular line is going to take a pause until this particular line has been resolved and returned that particular result that you are intended to. And this line is going to be freeze and it will not execute until and unless this particular line has been executed. So let's quickly see this as well. 
So now what we have is we have got the same code that we have just discussed into the our presentation. Now say that if I remove this async right and try to use await inside a function which is not async, hit enter. What you can see here is await is only valid in async functions at the top of the label a bodies of one modules. Basically, what it is saying is that you have to use your function in the async way. So we have to say that async and we will use async over here. Once we have got the async, we can just go ahead and hit enter. Now the promise is in pending state after 1000 milliseconds, which is one second, we got that alert which is saying that done. Okay. Now let me quickly go ahead and increase the time to let's say that 12 seconds. Okay. Now after that, we are going to have a uh, we are going to have few console elements over here so that console.log so we, we say that async start okay and then what we have is we say that async end okay and what we can have no not here actually we have to put over here after the result has come now what we can do is we can also use the concept of console.time methods that we have taken that we have seen that to see how we can have this so Basically, I have just hit enter, so it is going to wait for 10 minutes, sorry, 12 seconds. And in the meantime, we can have just say that console.time, okay, and we'll say that here async. So we will say async over here, okay. And then once we've got that async, and then what we'll do here is we'll have console.time log over here. So we'll say that, okay, console.time log async. And then we'll also say that console.time end. To see what exactly is happening, okay, how many second or how many time it is taking, how much time it is taking. So we'll just go ahead, hit enter. Now async start we got at the top, okay. It is now still it, it is in waiting state. The promise is in is still in a pending state. It can either go to rejected or fulfilled. Now we say here it is saying that done. Click on OK. So if you see here, if we see the log over here, right? What we have got here is it is saying that 12, uh, 12 uh, 54 that means uh, it is basically approx 12 seconds uh, approx like 13 seconds that we have got over here so that means it is waiting for that and then only these logs are coming over here after 12 seconds so that is how your async and await works now you might be wondering where we could use this async and await keywords in our near real life right so suppose that you are trying to make a full calendar okay you are trying to make a calendar for any custom object or any standard object where you need to display the details right so to display the details you will be calling the method in the load of your page and in the load of your page you will be preparing the calendar as well you will be calling to the apps classes so where what you need to have is you need to have to wait until your records has come and then prepare the calendar so that you don't get any error that is the one use case that where you can use async await. The other use case is the very simple thing here is like you are trying to make the API call to any system like say that uh, a GitHub. Here you say here we have got the GitHub. So what we have is we made async method where we say that so author. This is our username Amit Astridia IT. This is my username of my GitHub. So if you go to the GitHub, okay. You will see this is my username and where you can find all my repositories which are public and then what we said is return the github response and what you need to use is which method of javascript which is used to make the api callouts then pass this api this is basically the url that you have to pass say api.github.com then users and this is basically nothing you can have directly write amit as tdit so it is also going to work like that as well so we have got the dynamic username over here. Now what it is going to do is this particular fetch method returns a promise that can be either go to the success state or go to the rejected state. So what we said is our wait and until this particular API call is being made. Once it is saying await, that means here we are going to get the response. Okay, for response, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and put a console log over here to see what exactly we are getting. Okay. So we got the console log for the github response and then we can have a console log for github user again for getting the user information what we say that await because this again this particular variable and then dot json method always returns a promise 
that is why we waited and we got a success response and we returned that response okay and then we say that await so avatar if you don't await what exactly it is going to say let's say here we got error it is saying that okay api dot error failed to fetch basically there is some error that is what we we got the error while fail like fetching the github response okay what we'll do is we'll try it again and see if that works so basically what we are uh, getting here is we are getting the error i'm not quite sure why we are getting the error we have actually tested this was working so what exactly it is going to do is it is going to return the uh, response uh, about your github user because this is a public api it doesn't require any authentication i can just give it one more time and if see if that works if not then you can just give it a try from your side and we'll see if that uh, actually works there is some sort of error uh, fail to fetch basically might be some sort of connectivity issue or any other issues but this is basically something where you can also use await uh, and async a keyword while working with the fetch method of your javascript so uh, this is it for this video thank you for your time and uh, uh, into the coming video we'll talk about some dom manipulation and how we can work with the events and event handler in javascript thank you